Hello friends! Today we're going to talk about array map in JavaScript. So first we're going to talk about what is map, when should you use map, and then we'll see some examples of using map. So first, what is map? Map is a higher order function on the array prototype. What does that mean? This means we can call map on any array that we create. If we look at the definition from the Mozilla Developer Network, it says the map method creates a new array with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. Now let's break that down. Um, so let's say we have an array of numbers like this, an array with the numbers 1, 2, and 3. And we want to create a new array that has 2, 4, and 6 inside of it. So if we think back to that definition, we want a new array and uh, highlighted from that definition, calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. So if we think of the example where we want to end up with an array of two, four, and six, what might, me, what, might me, what might we mean by that? And this is what we mean. So let's say we had this function called double. It takes in a number and returns that number times two. So what if we called this function on every element in that original array? we would end up with 2, 4, and 6. So the main idea being we have our array starting as 1, 2, and 3. We call double with each value, and then we get 2, 4, and 6. So let's break this down a little bit. Um, if we Let's say we didn't have map, and we wanted to call this function manually. We could start off with an array of numbers, 1, 2, and 3. We could create a result array. We could then manually invoke our double function, which we just defined, with every number inside of the numbers array, and store that inside of the result array, and we would end up with an array of 2, 4, and 6. Simple enough. Uh, but of course, we don't want to do this manually all the time, so we could also do this with a for loop. Uh, works in a very similar way, but now instead of having to manually specify the indice, we can just create a for loop that goes from 0 to the length of numbers, and then for every number inside of that, we're going to invoke double with that number and put it into the result array. Simple enough. But we can do even better. <laughs> uh, we could use the built-in for each function. Uh, again, we're calling double manually each time, uh, but this is a little bit cleaner because we don't have uh, the whole for loop with the iteration and things like that, but it works in the same way. So we do a for each over numbers with the values 1, 2, and 3. And then for each number, we invoke double to get back that doubled number, and then we store it in the result array, ending up with the array 2, 4, and 6. Now, this, this is where map comes into play. So instead of having to call that function manually every time, we can just pass that function into map, and JavaScript will call the function on every element for us. So let's see what that might look like. Ta-da! It's beautiful. So now we can just say numbers.map, we pass in that function that we defined, and under the hood, JavaScript will automatically call that function for every element inside of the array, and then store it in a new array, and we have now the array 2, 4, and 6. Beautiful. Um, and I showed defining the function separately, but you might see this often as well. You can actually define the function in line. So this is doing exactly the same thing, but instead we're just defining the function on the same line that we're calling the map. But this will work in exactly the same way. This function will get called on every element inside of the array to create a new array with the values 2, 4, and 6. Fantastic. All right, so thinking back to like what is actually happening here, we start with one array. We run each value in that array through some function that results in a new value for each value in the original array, and now we have a new array with some new values in it. And that is what is map. So now when you read this definition, it, it might make a little bit more sense. So the map method creates a new array, right? We had that result array with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. So we call double on every element in the original array to get our result array. Fantastic. All right, so when should you use map? When you want to create a new array of the same length as the original array. Now, a lot of times when you see map, you see people talking about filter and reduce and some of these other um, higher order methods. But specifically, map will create a new array of the exact same length. So if you know that you need a new array of the same length, you should use a map. And the other thing is, when you want to transform an array of one thing into an array of another thing. 
another thing. In our simple case, we took an array of numbers and turned that into an array of doubled numbers. Cool. Let's see some examples. Now, if you're watching this, in the description below is the repo, and I have all of the examples that I'm about to do, and you can try them yourself. So if you want to give them a try before I do them, pause the video, go clone the repo, and give it a try. So let's see. All right, so we see our first example here, and this is what I showed in the slides. We start off with an array of numbers. We have a map, and uh, that map will multiply each number by two, and then we get the resulting array. So I have some other examples in here. So say, for instance, we have this array of days, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we want to create a new array with just the first three letters of each day. So let's do that. So let's call this abbreviated. I think that's how you spell abbreviated. And we'll say days.map. And then we need a function that takes in each individual day. And we're going to return the first three letters of the day. So there is a built-in substring function you can use. So I'll say uh, start at zero and give end at three. So give me the first three characters. And now if we log that out, abbreviated has the first three characters of every day. Simple enough. Uh, so for this next example, we have an array of objects. Each uh, is a person having a first name and a last name. And I want to create a new array with the string full name of each person. So that would work like this. So I'll say people, well, let's say const uh, full names is going to be people.map. We have a function that takes in a person. And then for each person, I want to return a string with first name, last name. So I'm going to return, I'll just use a template literal. And we want to do person.firstname space person.lastname. Simple as that. And if we log that out, we get an array with strings of their full name. Cool. So we took an array of objects and turned that into an array of strings. Awesome. Uh, this next one is an array of objects. They're all animals. They have a name property and a size property. And we want to create a new array with just the names of the animals. This is my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. <laughs> and uh, then we'll get back to it. Three, two, one. OK. So we want an array with just the names of the animals. So it's very similar to the previous example. So let's say uh, animal names is going to be uh, animals.map. We'll give it a function that accepts each animal, animal. <laughs> and we just want to return animal.name, just like that. And if we log uh, the animal names, we get cat, dog, lion, and elephant. Um, you'll notice I'm using two different syntax for fat arrows. Um, I used this syntax because it was a very short function. This was a little bit longer, so I did the full syntax with a return. And similarly here, but you can write it either way. Both will work. Um, OK, so for this next one, this is where things get a little bit more tricky. So create a new array of objects with the properties, value, and index. So one thing I didn't talk about in our quick introduction to map is that the map function also gives you access to the current index in the array. So we could do this. We could say uh, const. Uh, values and indices, maybe? I don't know if that's how you spell that. Let's say things, OK. Uh, we can say the numbers dot map. This is going to give us a function with access to each number. And now for each number, we want to return an object. So we're going to return an object with the properties value and index. So if I want the property value, I can just call this value. But a map also gives you access to the index and also the array that you're iterating over. In this example, we don't need the array, but I will just say index. So now, in this object, we can pass back value and index. And we're essentially returning an object that has both a value property and an index property. Value will be the value from the array. Index will be whatever index is inside of the array. So if we log things, we now get objects that have the value of the value inside of the array. 
and a property index, which is the index in the array. So this comes in handy if you actually need access to the index uh, inside of the function. All right, for this very last one, this is even trickier. So create a new array with each value multiplied by the next value. The last value should be multiplied by the first value. So for example, given the array 2, 5, and 10, we want our map function to return the first value is 2 times 5, the second value is 5 times 10, and the last value is 10 times 2. So let's do this. Um, let's say multiply, multiplied by next is starter.map. It's going to give us uh, a, a function. We will get access to the number. We'll also get the index. And we'll also get the array. Now, um, because I have the index, I can get access to the next value. So let's say, um, let's just call it let. We'll say let next index be equal to index plus 1. And really, I just want to return the current number multiplied by the array at the next index, right? Because number is going to be like 2. And then index will start off as 0. If we add 1 to it, that'll be the next one. And if we say array brackets next index, that'll grab the next one. Uh, but we have our special case here, because if it's the last index, we actually want to bring it back to 0. So we'll say um, if. Uh, index is equal to array dot length minus one, meaning we are at the very last index. And actually, I want, uh, yeah. Then I'll set next index equal to zero because I want it to be the first value in the array. Now, if we log that out, we should get multiplied by next, and we get 10, 5, and 20. Fantastic. All right. In this video, we talked about what is map, when should you use map, and we saw some examples of map. This is array.prototype.map for JavaScript. Um, thanks so much for watching. Um, I live stream every Wednesday at 8.20 PM Mountain Time, myself solving code katas. So if you want to see more examples of using map and filter and reduce and other JavaScript type things, tune in for that. You can see my full live stream schedule at coding.garden. And please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you very much. See you next time.